easy? Yes, it is. Yeah, I like it as well. Like they were talking about on the desk, they've been able to do on the spot lane every single game. They've had priority for TN to play around. It sets up them to get both of those early objectives. We saw them getting Dragon and being able to rotate and get the Herald as well. <laughs> and, and then this has been a Gimgoon champion. Despite the nerfs coming through on the Q movement speed, it is Gimgoon's second most played with yep. the Renekton. And it's going to be the Ken. You know that the Shy's most played career-wise champion is this Kennen. So we'll see that all-in potential once more set up for Invictus Gaming. I want you to run me through FPX's draft first because this is rinse and repeat of what we've seen bar the top lane. It's, it's going to go the same way, right? They're, they're going to want to play around this bot pressure once Dragon comes up, try to get an early Drake. At that eight-minute mark, they're going to be able to transition that top and get Harold. Yep. And they're, they're trying to play the map. They're trying to play this rotation game. They're trying to punish IG with the globals coming out from the Galio ultimate as well as the Ash. On the side of IG, though, this one I like a bit more because now you do have a true hard carry in the top side. So we can see Ning put more focus up there, especially once Puff hits that level six point. Finally getting to see that Senna ultimate used in an offensive capacity. And then Kennen also fits with Nico in the sense that he does great when champions come in, yep. but also with having a Nautilus in the bot side, you obviously can follow up on an engage as and well. And we've got significant change of damage, right? We've got a bit of AP, got a bit of AD. There's a nice balance meaning here for Invictus Gaming, but after what we saw in game two, it does come down to what we've seen in the early game. IG, of course, netted that skirmish, and it was building the bridge from there into mid to late. But things were messy. And to say the least, I think recovering from that second game, we might get even messier. Not really a recovery, is it? No. And <laughs> you know, I wonder how these teams will play because I think IG can opt into playing a messier style with having this, uh, and by messier, I mean more aggressive, right? Yeah. I don't want to keep using that term. They're, they can play more for the shy given vision. Let them try to dominate this 1v1. We talked about the dawning shadows can come out. For FPX, it's been the same game plan every time this series. And I like that they keep going back to it because we've seen how it can work and we've seen that it, it does work. Let's see if they run into it as we go into game number three. Hello, Boris. As we run into the rift, one apiece for the elimination match between our two ex-world champions. And not much changes really in draft. For the third time around, we've seen pretty standard picks come through. They know what they like, and they like what they want as we enter the rift with Double oh, Glacier once again. Oh, he's going for PTA. AD Kennen. Yes, he he's is. He's actually been playing this in solo queue. I saw him picking it up the other day, going back to this. Now, AD Kennen's going to fit in very differently to this composition as we talked about, because the double AP, we expected Slicing Maelstrom with Pop Blossom, bit of a wombo. Is this all about the laning phase and, what, split push pressure? Like, assuming he does commit to that, right? Yep. Because, I mean, technically he, he can still just go uh, go Gunblade and then go or transition an AP, something like that. True. But if it was the AD cannon, he does commit to that. Yeah, it's a lot more about the, you know, dominating the lane, playing out as a, as a pure split push threat. <laughs> Is it funny, though? I mean, the Shy, the AD top player, picks up his most played champion, Cannon, and turns it into an AD threat in his third game, so... We'll see, we'll track that. Starts with the Cull, of course, in that top lane with a potion by his hand. It'll be about that first item where we can talk about And this, this matchup more. got even easier this patch, where, like we said, the movement speed on Volleybear's Q got nerfed, so it's going to be very easy for the Shy to kite that out as yep. well, get those stuns and just keep harassing the Volleybear down. Are you ready to watch this level one once again? Ignite put down, third time in a row. Battle Lad's going to get poked out by LWX and Chris at the exact same bit of health. How many times does he need to go through this to learn? <laughs> hey, he did a bit more damage this time, though, with Puff. But you're right, it's happened every single game. <laughs> I actually can't understand. So Is it a mind game? Chris, but LWX will hit level two first, much like every other game, and then push the wave. I don't know what to say. <laughs> the drafts have been similar. And the they've game actually, has been similar. they have actually had that same bot lane every game. They yes. have had Senna Nautilus every game. And they they played this exact matchup in game one. <laughs> We're having a closer look at top. It's uh, the PTA Cannon talked about their overheal alacrity, bit of attack speed. Resolve was the secondary trait. I believe I saw a bone plate. Yep. 
So, gonna have a bit of safety in the lane, though, yeah. Just as Punchu, Shield of Duran only on the tip of the tail. Yep. Nice job of him using that W and getting the movement speed out of it as well. Nice Tangle Barb, and the lane dominance continues, right? Rookie with individual skill. Interesting to see that the Shy went towards over here, though. It is a very, it's viewed as a very greedy rune. You can only take it in, like, hard winning matchups to get value yep. out of it. And this is what we set up in draft, that Ning would play more towards topside with this cannon. And Gimgoon's too far out in this lane, might have to burn the flash as the Shy comes on in. The smoke screen used nicely. Shielding here from the Sky Splitter, but Ning in position with the end of the line. The flash forward from the Shy, but Gimgoon dodges away from the Q, and here comes Doombi, very fast with the Predator. The counter engage, massive as Ning knows he's gonna die, just wants to kill Gimgoon. It's a one for one trade as rookies come up as well to help out his jungler. As you pointed out, it was so important that the Shy missed that Q. Had he gotten that, been able to stop Stunned down Gimgoon. They probably could have picked up two kills. He missed it. Nice dodge coming out from Gimgoon. They end up going one for one. I like that Ning had the confidence to go forward and finish off the kill on Gimgoon, realizing, hey, I have the phase rush. I will yep. be able to get out of here with Rookie's backup. Really nice. Again, you mentioned it last game. The Goon has had such a good series. It, what, what a strange time we live in where, <laughs> honestly, doonby has been the best player on this team even in this series. Yep. But Gimgoon's been the clear second. It's when you don't remove the duct tape and you think, actually, this is just as good as new now, right? Yes. Yes? Yes. Well, you made the reference originally in the split. Oh, I, I follow the, your lead. The reference king is, you know, I've been called my whole life. Yeah. Very popular, you must be, with the ladies. As <laughs> we move forward and I think <laughs> LWX in this lane, he's by himself for the time being. And he has the wave in a really good position. He's actually slow pushing it, so he's building up, denying some CS from Puff as well. Right now, he has about a 10 CS lead, but obviously there's a wave stacking into Puff, so that's going to equalize in, you know, just a, just a minute or so. Sir, we have a long sword on the shot. Oh, same thing actually happened top, where, of course, you know, the wave did get pushed into Gimgoon, so yep. it is building back up into the shy, so he's going to be extremely happy with this one. So as the wave comes through, just note that... CS difference should be in favor of two or three for the Shires. The next wave channels on in. Uh, trying to clear vision now is Tien up towards his top side, and that tri brush ward is going to be quite helpful, but it is FPX who control the river. And Ning is pathing up towards top after clearing out with Rookie really shoving in hard. This is what we've seen in the regular season. Rookie doesn't care. He'll manipulate his lane. He, he, ac he actually dominate. does it every game. Yes. Like, and no matter the champion, like he'll blind pick Orianna. He'll, you know, play it into anything, and then he will just be under your turret permanently pushing you in. Which might be great because now with the wave state, Tien's going to get spotted out. Walking into the jungle, Rookie needs to be there. Crisp has roamed up, but Ning might actually find Gimgoon. But he's waiting. Tien now for the one versus one. Ulti not available. Waiting for the blast going to be used. But shielded around. Ning's in a lot of trouble for Winds of War. Burnt. He's dead. And now the Shy going to get stunned down with Q from Gimgoon. Doombi's just setting up to push the wave. We might get another kill with a dive imminent. Yeah, Tien's here and Crisp is on his way. And here comes Rookie though. Pop Blossom is available. Tien flashes away though. And that's going to be a summon and Burnt while Rookie now has to defend the Shy too. They have a wave as well. They can keep going. They can dive this. He's under turret. The Shy needs slicing Maelstrom, but he needs to kill that minion wave. I don't think it's going to be in time. The flash shield of Duran onto the Shy. Gets Rookie too. Just as punch with Chris landing the hook. FPX. Four for one. Chris facilitated all of this as well. He made the roam to mid, which allowed Duinby to walk into oh the enemy jungle. God. We're not done, are we? Smoke screen down onto Chris might to get the jungle camp. Teleport's being burned. It is the Shy is coming through. He still wants six. The ultimate from Doombi to fly through. The Shy gets hit. A major mistake as Gimgoon with the dive survives. And IG thought that the Shy could TP in, get that level six, open up the Slicing Maelstrom, and be able to get a few kills in return. He TPs in, gets locked down immediately, and just straight up gets bursted out. Big mistake coming out from IG. He was hoping he'd get that level six and just press R. But now, three kills on Tien. Mark number three. Ning gonna stop the back. And you know what? Tien's like, whatever. I'm so fed, it doesn't matter. And uh, Tien's also level six, and Ning's only level five, so. Yeah. I don't think that's actually a fight that Ning wants. But what do you do now? You're a 2k goal behind at seven minutes into the game, and there is that global pressure from Doombi. We talked about the Shy, very irrelevant at the moment on this AD cannon. 
he's still gonna do fine in the isolated laning phase just because again he's arranged he has the the movement speed coming as well has the stun so not much Gimgoon can realistically do especially right now while his ult's not up when that's back up it will be a good threat but I like that FPX can consistently threaten this though do NB can can just consistently hover. Now he can obviously just full-on commit because of how far forward the Shy is, but the Shy will be feeling constant pressure from the mid lane. Control Ward is doing a lot of work here, but being pressured from Ning walking up as well. Now that was actually Rookie who's disguised. So we would get Control Ward in the end and try and open up his options in the future. Meanwhile, Bao Lan is a busy, busy boy. They're gonna start Herald actually, with Doombi in full vision. Crisp is finally making his way over. But so is Puff. Puff is much closer than LWX and Chris. So IG should feel in a commanding position to just take this one. Predator's being used. Enchanted Cross the Arrow is available though from range. LWX can fire that into the river. We'll do exactly that onto Balan who gets nicked. Double shield of drain only to one though. As the Winds of War with a bit of damage and the oh! follow comes to his Chris has nailed a big hook, a double play. And LWX has the slowest Ning over the wall. At the end of the day for Invictus Gaming, they're just getting pummeled once again. Doombi needs that Q to kill the Shy, and he finds it. Zero and four, the Shy's having tea time. Seven to one, 3k gold lead for FPX, and... Oh no, he thought Tien was gonna go for Ning. Now no Pop Blossom, Puff will get the double root, but it means absolutely nothing as we get our seven for one. And IG, they go for the play, but amazing arrow coming out for LWX. Balan just does kind of just walk into it, but clearly not expecting it. Then Chris once again making the big play. I think Duinbi and Tien have been the two standouts because of how well they've been using their pressure mid in those globals. But Chris, even being involved in three kills, has put so much pressure on the map. Even when he wasn't involved in those top lane kills earlier on, yeah. his hover towards mid is what allowed it to happen. He's level four when he started making this run. And here we go, the arrow comes out, chaining that into the W from Duinbi. They're able to burst out Balan and flash from Crisp. So nice with that death sentence. Walks forward, gets the two-man play. As I suddenly had a southern accent, they keep going on to the shy. <laughs> And, you know, he's going to get taken down by the Galio Q in the end. I love the zoning from Gimbyun around the Rift Herald as Ning took it. It's like, no, you're not getting this. And the Shy goes in a little bit too deep to try and find his Chris with the blind hook only onto the blue buff. Tien wants the steal and says, thank you for the leash. Chump. 4-0 and 2. He's got Warriors and that just leads him right to the Dragon. And okay, I mean, gold leads th it. This is free for SDX. Like, IG Rails live no way of contesting this one. And it's going to be really interesting to see how IG could realistically even get back into this game. But hey, well, FPX, maybe going back to something that's familiar, but going to back off at the last. The IG outscale this with the Volley Bear frontline, the Galio. What, what's your initial thoughts? Because I know it, it's built on the engage like IG have dropped many, many times. In, in pure 5v5, seeing the the way the build it, the shy is going, no. FPX yep. should definitely be able to win out in those later five fights, but I don't feel like that even matters right now because we're 4k gold ahead on the side of FPX. Sure. Like, you win out any fight at this point forward, you should just be able to keep your foot on the gas pedal and keep keep going. And just keep looking for that Doombi ultimate, right? He has Teleport, he has Predator available very shortly, and that's, that ulti. That's the thing, I want to keep seeing them play towards topside because we can just keep seeing the Galio hover. We've obviously seen Crisp has a lot of freedom to, to just move from this lane, put all this pressure top, try and break down that top tier one, and then we can turn that into something like a Rift Herald. Yep. And we have two. We only have two plates down on the bottom side as well, so it should be quite easy to break that one that down. That is the funny thing, right? When you have such an acceleration so early in the game, you have plating available. So FPX, the world, they're always a lot of gold available. They also have Rift. just way more plates. They've got two top, one mid, and three bot. Yeah. IG, F IG, I'm sorry, only have one plate in the bot lane. Which is crazy when you see how IG have been playing these games. At least game one and game two. But we're heading down the barrel of an early defeat. Now, at this point, we just keep going through the lanes. IG is trying to get some advantage through the Shy up in this top lane. Yeah, Balan has even made his way top, so maybe looking to even set up a potential dive on top side. He does have Slicing Maelstrom up. Everything is up for Ning and Balan. All right. Well, depth charge is going to be crucial in this next engage. Gimgun with a low mana bar, but his ulti's still there. Dredge line used just to get in range. Ultimate with the flash, waiting for it as he ults out. Gimgun burns his own flash. Skysplitter with the shield. The slicing maelstrom doesn't do too much. Puff helps out. They use four ultimates for that while LWX trades it with first turret blood. 
I mean, they have to give up that bottling turret still. Puff is going to go pick up CS in the mid lane and share that alongside Rookie, but... IG had to, to overcommit on one side to even be able to make a play, so at least they're getting something back, but nice answer from IG. I do like the way that, uh, that IG played it, because yep. we saw... Uh, Ning and Balan take it slow. They were hovering the wall. They didn't want to show too early and cut off the wave like you see a lot of teams do because, of course, Doombi can always follow with his ultimate and his TP. So they had to kind of wait it out as long as possible. But it's just a great indicator of where IG are in this game, right? That's what they have to do to get one kill and get a trade of gold on the map. That's how much it takes. As Gim Goon goes down. He's the trade-off while LWX picks up a lot of gold in this matchup. He's 1,500 over puff. He's and a person without a bounty, but he is quite fed. Interestingly enough, on our mini map, we actually saw Doombi TP to top, get out that instant push, so they can look for this invade in the enemy jungle. Doombi has popped the Predator. He's running at Ning, but he's already away. Well, Ning just has to forfeit some of his jungle up towards his top side and give some plating over for the next 20 seconds while it's available. That's a great way of, I guess we can call it, I don't want to call it artificial tempo because it is tempo, but a great way of creating tempo out of nowhere is just, you know, committing that instant TP back to lane. Oh, yeah. You have the item advantage. You're able to push that out instantly, and it allowed Chris to make his way into that jungle first. It got the vision down, and the Herald will be up soon. So that one TP from Doonby is going to translate into a lot of instant pressure. I like the word vision alongside those lines as well. Deep vision in front of the Herald means that FBX just getting ready for this to be spawning in under a minute. We'll even need some time for a if reset. If you want, I can throw out all the buzzwords for you. Uh, yeah. Vision, tempo, I'll stop priority. It. Oh, my, my top button just Ro came undone. Rotations. Oh. <laughs> you got one more for me? Oh, God. <laughs> What's the next? synergy on this on this desk is too much. It got a bit weird, didn't it? As we uh, see Duinby just instantly clearing out wave mid, Tien is going to be able to pick up that top side Herald. And Ning is top side, but I expect IG to just let this one go. Dragon is coming up in 40 seconds. So maybe going to transition down to that bot side for vision. Oh, actually, <laughs> it's not Ning on top. That's a rookie. That's all right. Again. Spectator needs to change. It'd be nice if we could see the Nico at all times. If anyone's listening. As the Shy wants solo kill, slicing Maelstrom used. Gim Goon trying to escape, and you know what? Solo kill territory. No! It's a volley ban with Sky Splitter. Gim Goon just sends it right back. You know the funniest part of that play? The Shy was the one laughing when it happened while Gim Goon sat there as serious as could be. At like one quarter health the whole time. The Blade of the Ruin King Cannon has been knocked down for his fifth death. So, IG are hard committing to playing through sides. IG, FPX, I'm sorry, going to get a ton of value through just forcing these plays as a team. As the Chetika Farrow narrowly misses onto the and collateral damage is away. We're taking a look at base because the Shy has TP but no ulti. But of course, he just wants to move back to this side lane. You mentioned through sides, Rookie picked up a turret in that top side, meanwhile. As, oh, they're going to do this. Rookie's making the TP. Lyric, are you ready? Pop Blossom with Flash is available. He's coming on in, pretending to be Ning. Goes golden. I don't know if that was a mistake, but Rookie, that was not good. I don't even understand what he was looking for. We've said many times, IG's comp doesn't play out like this. They have a Blade of the Rune King Cannon. This cannon only provides his auto attack damage. His spells don't actually do anything other than provide some utility. I don't know. When Rookie has high highs, he also has low lows. How do you tilt after the game you win? They just won. IG stuff. They came back strong and smart after after their first loss, you know, uh, with you know, an asterisk on it because it yep. was a bit of a mess. But hey, they won game two. Coming to game three, and so there's nothing to break down I'll, here. I'll break this down for you. TP's on a ward. Oh. <laughs> Misclick. <laughs> Wanted to make sure that the ward would see it. Why TP in the first place? Oh, my God. Well, we're going to game four. I and, mean, and we were going to go to Game 4 regardless. <laughs> but we're definitely there going. There was no uh, way to not go to Game 4. But IG tried to make it as FPX favored as possible. I, I mean, this point around, let me just be real and say that FPX have been the better team in this series so far. Yes. There have been some uh, miss, miss moments FPX in Game 2. FPX have been a team. But FPX have definitely been communicating so much better. Or do you remember in Round 1 versus V5, was it you and I casting that? It was. Yes, it was. Versus V5, the miscommunication out of FPX was appalling for a world champion I mean, lineup. We just saw them, kind of funnily enough, we saw them get outlaned and outmatched. 
and you would think that would be able to happen against IG if it can happen against V5, but yeah. very susceptible to the way V5 draft, because V5 always drafted a strong bot side and had a lot of winning lanes and played through snowballing through early game. IG haven't really done that this series. Hey, we're doing this again, oh except... Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> the Shy is 1 of 6. When does that buff come through? Not this game. No, not this game. This AD Cannon. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. And Shannon the arrow dodged away from. Rookie now has crisp on him. No flashes from the death sentence. And, you know, this one's in the bin at 18 minutes in. If the Shy dying 1v1 versus the Volley Bear who took no damage is an indicator, then I don't know what it is. I wonder if IG are talking about next game already. I would be. Can we just have a moment to talk about the Shy? Just if it's only 30 seconds. Yes. What a, a roller coaster of emotion we've been through this let's, year. Let, let's enjoy. He goes in, later through, he comes out once again. Just gets This w'd. champion only Auto. does damage with his auto attacks. His spells provide him absolutely nothing. And you know, there's a reason why no one plays this champion, AD. No one. Are you ready for this roller coaster? Let's go. We started summer thinking the Shy was playing some of his worst League of Legends, of course, from MSC. Really they had some playoffs. good games, yep. We got towards playoffs and the Shy got better. We got in playoffs, the Shy was not great again as he auto attacks Doonby. He doesn't really have too much armor bar the Zonya, so maybe he does, excuse me. Enchanted Cross Arrows flying in, dodged away from the Shy. The little let him get down, but FPX are grouping up. And you know, okay, Balan. All right, he wants to start. Chris actually flashes away. Tien is over the wall. I'm just saying, he's the most consistent Nautilus I've ever seen at at queuing that terrain. Yeah. He, he always moves forward. That's how good Balan yeah, is. Balan, right? you know, never never looks behind, never looks at the past. Mm. But uh, moving forward, I think the nice thing about FPX's comp from, from here on out, I mean, I guess any comp with a 9k gold lead, but even more so this one, mm -hmm. they're going to pry out all three lanes, so it's going to consistently be this where we see their bot lane link up with Tien, push out mid lane, get vision on the side of the jungle that they're playing around. Right now they're getting bot side vision. That is... <laughs> It actually just seems like they're following the Shy around, which sure. at this point is a great strategy. The Shy is so squishy. The Shy doesn't. He's, he's able to lock you down, you know, if he gets that ultimate, if he's able to stun you up, but then you're dead. He's never going to get a chance to push past River in this series. Is no, he? he's uh, he's gone. I said series. I, mean, I actually might be right. I'm pretty positive Tien wins the 1v1. Yes. Oh, he's even a level up. I am too. Let's go. Blade of the Ruined King. Remember, ult is available. Is it not a 1v1, though, because remember, Doombee's coming in, and the Shy, 1 and 7. Get your soccer references out. Hey, though, IG are on top side. They can yep. potentially do something, but guess what? You're against the Volley Bear. And one of the reasons, talking to pros, that LPL's always preferred Volley Bear, even over some champions like Set that I saw places like NLCS and LCE going towards, is the versatility oh, nice. in cleanse. But no, the versatility <laughs> that the ultimate gives you, like a champion like Set, right, where you have to get on another champion, typically you only go in, Volley Bear can get out, can get in, He's more has more avenues available to him. Man. I think Tien so far in this series. Tien has been a great kindred. I mean, this is his third time playing it. I just want to note that with Marks, he's been super on point. This is his eighth. In all three games, he's gone above six, which in the LPL is actually not too common. In all three games, he's had two winning side lanes. That also helps. As Dragon's going to go over, we're on Mountain Soul just to make things worse for IG. Match point being faced right now. An elimination for Invictus Gaming. The regional qualifier buff could feel like it's already They are the, the world champions of the regional qualifier. Yep. IG haven't won a best of five outside of regional qualifiers for two years. It's been since 20... No. Do you remember 2018 uh, against uh, RNG? Uh, apart from world, sorry to clarify. Lyric has written me a note. Thank you, sir. You, you know, you help. Hey, brother, you look out for me. I write you notes all the time. And this is good, brother. You know, this is not the brother people meme about. This is a good, you know, thank you, brother. But, uh, oh, Tangle Buff. This is not Hulk Hogan, as some of you might assume. Nah. Always played it. I remember on GameCube, WrestleMania. He was my character. Hogan Smash or whatever it is. There's Wimby looking for it. But nope, they're just going to instead guarantee some priority, put down some vision, and I mean, Honestly, at this point, I wish they would. I'm sure they could just continuously bait out the Baron, force IG to come into them. Oh, flash shielded Duran. This is under Rookie and his clone. Enchanted across the arrow with a follow-up. Pop Blossom 
won't come through and immediately Baron on the menu for FPX. FPX realistically could have done this at any time in the past five minutes. They are so far ahead. IG have no hope of coming into them. And we're going to see Gim Goon come over after pushing the bot wait, the bottom lane just to provide a bit of safety. IG need to look for a steal. Yeah, they do, but instead FPX just turned the fight. It flashes over the wall. Balan's dead. All right. Well, here we go again. And now back to the Baron for round two. What do you, what do, you do? Oh, Gim Goon killed the Shy again. <laughs> and he's still laughing. Look at him. Gim Goon serious. The Shy is, is jovial. laughing. How? The Shy has died. He, he's double digit deaths in the series. Maybe he's laughing because he knows something we don't. He knows the second it gets to that magic number 10, that's where it all starts. Oh, yeah, this is where the split push cannon. I mean, he's got a zeal, he's got a pickaxe. I think he, he's like Winsu's and then maybe rapid fire. Man, it doesn't matter what he buys. It doesn't matter. Put anything in his inventory right now for free. They still don't win. Maybe he's laughing because he thinks game four is the IG buff. So what you're saying is we're going to five even numbers. But the yeah. tragedy for that is, you know, game five exists. True. It but then IG like, normally win. That. It could be like how like countries, certain countries have like certain numbers they don't put in, like elevators or building floors. Oh yeah. Like for example here, no fourth floor. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. There is no in, fourth floor in, in America. It is 13, I think. Oh, there's no 13th floor in hotels. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, in Australia, we have all floors because we don't bloody waste space. You know? <laughs> it doesn't waste. <laughs> it does nothing. You're well, just, just write a different number. But how annoying it'd be. I'm on the fourth floor, but I'm not really. Oh, the teleport. Wait. Oh, he TP. No. Gim Goon was waiting. Oh, no. We don't have to watch Let's this. remember. He was, he was first on our all pro team, right? First. Number one. Yeah. 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 Just for you guys out there, the Shy was our MVP top laner. Best in the league as <laughs> voted. Yep. Yes, he was. And now he's one and eight. I love that. Okay, this FPX plan is just so great. It's Even fine. finding yeah. a way to make to like make use of LWX's Whatever you want to say, poor form, not being as good on this ch these champions in uh, this meta, still finding value. I'm not even casting this. He flashes away. At least the Shy lives, but 1 and 8 again. He is more than half of the death for Invictus Gaming is against the turret. They're trying to find that last engage, but FBX still very healthy with the Kindred Old available. Ning gets the half himself, and forward they go into this turret to try and clear away. Look, I told the story last game of how. FPX are our like anime protagonists. They're like one of those OP ones that have plot armor. You can't do anything against yeah. them, Asterix. They just win. Oh, he's got rapid fire now, Lyric. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. This is where Let's I see. do win. <laughs> well, flash forward. Oh, actually, they're oh. lining up the Tangle Bubs, but Tien's ult is going to do a lot. The Pop Blossom comes down. It's flashed away from the Hero's Entrance, re-engages. Now, maybe it matters, Lyric, because the Shy might have his choose of the kill onto Doombi. How did IG win that. I mean, it all came from Puff and Rookie, right? The Rapid Fire Cannon, sadly, not a significant and part, but nice tangle bar. Nice tangle bar, nice double ultimate coming out from the IG members. We saw FPX got so low after that play. They are still sitting at a 10k gold deficit, but hey, this was going to be soul for FPX. And somehow, now, it's going to have to try and be a steal from Tien. I mean, with this gold lead, I feel like FPX could fight 4v5. 4v5, yeah. I they mean, oh, wait. No lands just fight up, though. All right. Let's see. IG want to draw it out. Remember, Pup has the sustain. Four versus five. Is 10k enough? You'd think it would be. The Shy is waiting for Tien to hop over oh, the wall. He wow. gets stunned up, and Chenicles Arrow comes through. Tien is dead. Thanks to Rookie. The Dragon secured. And FPX now in the middle with Gimgun leading the charge. Four versus one. The bear angry. Someone took his honey as Pop Blossom is avoided with good timing of the stopwatch. And IG getting low. Bow Lander sacrifices his life. Puff flashes over the wall. And the bear is still hungry. Bow Land may be dead alongside the rest of IG, but Ning and Rookie are. The death sentence comes in. And just like that for Dragon, they sacrifice four. Great play coming out from Gimgu. Just a great series overall. Crisp as well with the flash play onto two members. Gimgu TP's in. Looks like they want to set up for a play on this bottom side turret. IG's mid lane inhib is also respawned, so you'd, you'd think they want to open that up as well. It does look like they're rotating now. I'm going to say something 
that has never been said versus the Shy in the past. Kim the best top laner in the world. Well, I was going to say top lane difference. Oh. Really feels like it's the element of the series, but hey, best top laner in this series is not the Shy. You know, and the surprising part isn't even the fact that we're saying it about the Shy. Yeah. It's the fact that we're saying it about Kim Goon versus the Shy. No disrespect to Kim Goon. He fills his niche really well. He's one of the best. Kim Goon is the best at being Kim Goon. But, I mean, man, in this series, guys popping off. God bless Let's Kim Goon. So there's the Flash Tangle Bar oh, wow. coming in from Rookie, setting up for the ultimate coming out from Puff. Rookie then runs for the Shy to do a bit of damage on uh, LWX as well. Then doing be left in a very bad spot. Dredge line from Balan. That's all she wrote. And we see this fight, which denies the Mountain Soul. Hey, and actually the Shy did do, do quite a bit of damage there. He did, and but Kim Goon's still better. I mean, he's fed. Kim Goon's fed, Kim Goon's taken. He gets in there crisp there as well. Nice hook to deny Balan, and he plays the flash play onto two members. Great series from Chris on the thresh so far. Yep. 008. He goes beyond Bond as the Shy's backing topside. FPX don't spot him. And now sacrifices his. Well, not really much. I even like the redemption coming out from him at this point because all of these fights are very extended fights. They already have yep. a lot of durable tools, as we've talked about in previous games with the Lance Spite, so you're going to get a lot of value and be able to fully use that redemption. Well, Rookie gets hit with the Enchanted from Pharaoh, though, at half health, gets a Tangle Barb, so he might just be dead. Puff can't heal him in time, and there you go, 4 versus 5 for 45 seconds. IG, that may have sealed the deal. Yeah, they still have all their other tools available. Every other ultimate is up, and we look at LWX, his is even already a third of the way there. They can keep going forward and forcing. Inhibitor going to be first. Mid was already broken. FPX, a dragon, this minion wave in. LWX is going to take the root. Dredge line set up from Balan. He wants to engage. The Wombo flies through again, but without Rookie, it's a lot harder. Gimgood gets hit pretty hard as Tien is running for the Kindred Heavy, while the Shy is DPSing the 1 and 9 cannon, forces out the Lambs respite, while the rest of FPX are getting busy. The Slicing Maelstrom with the stun down, but the Shy will die his 10th time in Game 3, and Ning and Puff can't defend this. And Duinby has TP, he's gonna come back in and FPX will be able to close out this game. Eventually, they get through. IG managed to get four kills as Enchanticus Arrow flies in, hits the mark. Puff gets the kill, Pop Blossom flies down. But FPX match point in what has been a chaotic series so far. It's been a head scratcher. We've seen three very similar drafts back to back. It makes me wonder if next game that IG will finally change sides. But IG need to change something. They need to change something because... Oh my god, they... I holy mean, the shy. Holy. He died half the deaths of FBX. But even the pick was confusing, right? Because, again, AD Ken is just, just not a good champion. We don't see it played for a reason. It is much more about playing that hard split push style, which is totally not what this meta is about. Is it? Oh, this has just been, I, I use the word perfectly, chaotic. Why does the Shy have the most damage? Because he got to sit in lane against a melee champion. He built AD and he was autoing all game long. <laughs> People would see that and be like, dude, wow, the, shy. the Shy really tried to carry IG. And then they look at the game score. Hey, to be fair, I don't want to discount his effort. I'm sure he did try to carry IG. Hey, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give him something. At least as a 1 in 10 cannon, you did a lot of damage in the end. You know, those last couple hey, of fights. IG trying is different from other teams trying, though. There's, again, right? A Try harder. <laughs> because, Lyric, let's be real. Look, you could say change your approach, but... L let's be real. Yes. IG and FPX, you and I, we know these teams quite well. We've been looking at them for a while. You know, I, I started casting last year. You've been an LPL fan for a very long time. IG and FPX, we know as teams, and we have very high standards. This series, does it hit those standards? I mean, high standards in the sense that IG have very high highs. FBX have amazing high highs as well. They're both world champions. You know champions. what the problem is? You know what the issue is? I was I was talking to, to one of our bosses the other day, and I told him, when you believe in IG is when IG sucks. Yeah. The problem is that coming into the series, most people believed in IG. Oh, you think that's why they're, yes. they're, they're performing poorly? Yes. Boys. I didn't perform. I didn't. Oh, I did. I you did. did you predicted them as well. We all I predicted think. them except Clement and uh, I think it was... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, maybe they were smart. Maybe they were angling for the IG win by predicting the other way, but I know the Who fans knows? believe in them as well. Who Everyone knows? believes in IG. The, the problem is, like, 
FPX at the moment look like the cleaner team. And even it's though in, in game two, it was very back and forth, but game one and game three, FPX have been clinical. Tien is returning back to form. And let, let's actually, you know, give a bit of context to this game because we saw them change up their draft this time to get that cannon in the top side. And we saw it was going to be 80 cannon the second he took that press the attack rune. Yes. And this was much more about playing through this top lane carry, making sure it's an isolated 1v1, giving it vision and letting it win out. But from the time when I remember Chris Brom mid and unlocked Duinby and Tien to go into the enemy jungle and they started picking up a bunch of kills top side. Well, now your top lane's exploded. We've seen every game that Ash is going to have priority in the bottom lane. And it doesn't matter that Duinby's falling behind in CS because he can always match with his global. So now, as FPX, you have pressure in all three lanes yes. with the carry jungler. Is it worth just saying ban Galio? I don't know what you open. That's like, true. the thing is, you open Lilia. And fans might think Lilia's fine, but... I'll just say it now, in solo queue, they've been spamming Lilia plus Renekton, Damn, like, yep. like Renekton mid lane. And, uh, Don't first pick that champion. That sounds that sounds pretty pretty dirty. I mean, there's a lot to go through with Draft, but right now, FPX are on match point, on the verge of knocking out Invictus Gaming from going to World and sending themselves to that fourth seed qualifier them, themselves. So we'll see what happens. We'll go to a break, then return to AD. 